Good morning, everyone out in the OCSB this morning. It's Monday. It's a new year. There's lots of opportunity. We're so excited to have you this morning. Um, this morning, we're doing a short live stream on how to embrace remote learning with Google Meet. How do we do Google Meets uh, as effectively as possible? And we're also going to give you some tips and tricks about how to leverage Google Meet to, to really take the best of what this has to offer as opposed to um, being worried about it making it look like face-to-face -face, because it's not face-to-face. -face. So how how do we embrace that? So um, so welcome. I see we have seven viewers already, people bright up and early. Um, so welcome. We're very excited for you to be here. Um, so I'm going, well, it is 7.30, so uh, we're going to get rocking and rolling. So, um, so before we get started this morning, as we start a new year, I want to acknowledge the uh, Algonquin people who have... Um, uh, on whose land we are uh, here unseated. Uh, we are settlers on this land. And I just want to recognize as we start a new year, the thousands of years of knowledge, wisdom, ingenuity, uh, family, uh, spiritual connection, um, all those components that, and the play that has been here on this land for thousands of years. So um, I want to recognize that as settlers, um, we are here on their unseated territory. And if you'd like to join me in prayer, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So may this blessing go with you throughout the next few weeks where we really try to figure out what we can do, what we can change, and what we can embrace. So in the name of the Father, the Son. So good morning, this is our squad this morning. So the ladies are gonna jump on and introduce themselves. I am Steph Pearson. I am one of the Learning Technologies Consultants. The three of us are on here this morning. And basically our job is to help you do your job digitally. And how do we help you get the pedagogy that you want with the digital tools that you need? So that's part of our job. But of course, right now we are heavy into Google Meet and HAPRA. So uh, I'm gonna get Tara to jump on and introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. I'm very excited to be here and to share a little bit about the standardized Google Meet practice that we have for you that you'll be using with your students this week. So, so excited. Good morning, everybody. Happy to see 20 friends with us this morning now uh, and looking forward to getting into it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm Catherine Wake. Thanks. <laughs> These are not our strong suits. Um, so on the screen there, you can see that we do have families of schools that we associate with. Um, but really, um, if you if you want to reach out to try this, one of us would be more than enough because we do we do try to get to uh, make sure that we're all looking after your needs. Um, but we do want to make sure that um, if you have questions that we can get those answered. So sometimes the fastest way to get that done is only email one of us because then we don't have to talk about each other. If, did you answer? Did you answer? And you'll get a faster answer. So. Uh, we love you. We want to keep you safe and we want to keep you uh, pointing forward and positive into this year. So what are we going to do today? We're, uh, we're going to talk about the how and why of Meet. Why are we using Google Meet? How do we do that best practice? How do we uh, move forward in the most uh, safe way for you and your students and that you can, um, and then we can assure using the Google Meet that the other products that we have for the OCSB work. Um, things to remember. And then uh, we're also going to go over some of those tips to um, lean into the features. How do you share your screen? How do you use classroom management? So all these components. So again, um, we have been doing this for four months, supporting the virtual academy teachers, both in the elementary and the secondary panel. Um, we've had lots of feedback and we are telling you, we have every kind of hiccup that can happen. We've seen and we want to make sure that, it, that you can avoid the hiccup. So we're here to help you drink a nice big glass of water and take a nice big breath. And, uh, and we're going to move forward. So I'm going to pass this over to Miss Potter, Mrs. Potter. All right. Okay, so what I am going to do is I'm going to do a very quick walkthrough of the process. And then during the process, what I'll do is I'll kind of explain the why we chose uh, this, these steps. So I'm just going to present my screen. And I feel like someone on Twitter said, don't do this anymore, but I just can't. It's impossible. I need to say I'm sharing my screen right now. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to always start with the staff portal because I'm going to do what you would do. We need to make sure that we're grabbing the proper 
email address of our students. So we're going to go here. We're going to select the class that we want to set up the class for. So here is my class. And we're going to jump over to the class info tab. And right under here, I'm going to triple click to it highlights it all. And I press control C and that will copy the email address. Of course, if you've used the email address before, it may just pop up when you're in your calendar. So now that I'm in calendar, I'm going to double check that I have my work email address right here. Here it is. And the sync is turned on if I'm in a laptop. If it's a Chromebook, you probably won't see it. You will not see that part right there. So now I'm going to hop over to calendar and I'm going to click on create. So I'm ready to start creating. The first thing I'm going to do is make this window really big because I need to see all the options here. So these two things right here are defaults. We want to make sure that we take them off. And the reason why we take these two things off is we do not want the ability for our students to either invite others or see their uh, classmates' email addresses. Email addresses are kind of like phone numbers. We want to keep the, those things private. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is right here in Add Guests. I already have it copied. I already pressed Control C. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control V and then Enter. And you can see that I have my 23 students popped up here. I can also click on this little arrow and see the entire list of who's in this class. As you can see, I have a couple co-teachers uh, with me as well, and they are also invited onto the meet. So if you do have um, a special guest or a, a a co-teacher, maybe a support staff, they would need to be added in separately here. So I was just talking to uh, a friend yesterday and she actually has some amazing artists lined up for her art class and, she, and uh, she's going to invite them into the calendar. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to start the class and we are going to label it. So because of my 7-8 roots, I'm going to pretend I am a 7-8 teacher today. So I'm going to say period one. That's what we call it in 7-8 land, period one. I'm going to have my science class with Mrs. Potter. And I'm going to say 708. And my class is starting um, at, I'm going to make it so that we can see it, friends. So we are going to say at 7.30. It's a very early class. And it's going to go to 8.30. Check to ensure that the date is accurate. We are not going to repeat this because this is just for my one science class today. And you can see as soon as I add a guest, this join with Google Meet has been added. So I am all ready to save this. I'm going to click on save. And this part right here probably is a new step for many of you. I think before we were all sending emails to students thinking it would make it easier. We actually have standardized the process. We want students to enter in through student portal. It just makes it so that that Google Meet link is in less places. Therefore, it is safer for you and for your students. So we are not going to send. But wait, how is it going to show up? It will. It'll show up in the student portal. Don't worry. So we are going to do not send, but we are going to say yes to invite external guests. External guests just means that our OCSB student accounts are on a separate domain than our at OCSB domain. It just separates the two students versus uh, staff. And um, that makes it a bit safer, but they are called on Google land external guests. So we're going to invite them. So you can see it has popped up here, my science class right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I have to turn off quick access. So what I actually have to do is I have to join in the Google Meet. I'm just going to turn off the mic and camera there. And I'm going to click in join now. And I'm going to click on this blue shield and I'm going to turn off quick access. What quick access does is it will create a waiting room for your students so that they won't be able to join when you're not there. The caveat of this is that you have to get there before anybody else gets there. That's why we say do this step immediately as soon as you create your calendar event. So that needs to happen. It's very important. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off share screen and chat messages. I was practicing this with my son last night and he could see that the present now is kind of grayed out on his screen. And he's like, oh, actually, that's a good idea. If I were, or all the do all the teachers know this mom? And I said, yeah, they're gonna know it. So it's a great idea because students um, accidentally or intentionally could share inappropriate messages um, in the chat message feature, or they could share something inappropriate on the screen. So we wanna make sure that um, we're doing this carefully. So I like to start with those all off, and then I'm going to leave the meet by hanging it up. As soon as I hang up this, then the waiting room has been created. So that's great. Um, so what I'm going to actually show you now is I have a student in student 17 who is waiting. So I'm going to click on Google Meet here. Oh, we just have to sign in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this 730 with Mrs. Potter um, and see what it says. So this is from a student point of view. Um, and notice I went in through student portal, two clicks, pretty easy. No one else is here. I'm going to try to join in and I get this message waiting for the host to join. This is the sign of safety, my friends. So as soon as I went in and clicked uh, quick access off, it created this nice waiting room and this waiting room will not be broken until the host arrives. So that's great. So I'm going to flip over to my other account. Here we go. And now I'm ready to start um, with my student, which I believe is here. So you can go in through calendar, that's fine. Or um, if we went in through staff portal, you would also see it right there. There's my Mrs. Potter period one. So now I'm the teacher. I'm just gonna turn these things off because I'm already using a microphone. And there you go, my student has automatically joined in. So that is great. Um, one thing I didn't mention is when I added guests, when I copy and paste, why did I use that HAPRA Google email address? Well, I did that because it contains every single student. And if new students are coming into your class or students are dropping your class, those things are updated on a 24 hour basis in PowerSchool. So that is always up to date. So you want to make sure that you are using um, that email address with your students. Uh, some other things. Can I ask you a question, Tara? Oh, awesome. Yes, thank you. Yeah, quick question. Should uh, educators be sharing the link with parents? Mm. They don't actually have to share this link with parents because we are only inviting our students. So to ensure that our students are signed in properly with their at OCSB accounts, um, we want everyone K to 12 to go to the student portal and click on the Google Meet icon right from there. They will see a list of all their classes. We don't want multiple people in. And in fact, if a parent tried to join in this meet, there would be a, a knock at the door and you would see a little pop up that says, you know, Mrs. Smith wants to come into your meeting. We have no way of knowing if this is really Mrs. Smith, the mother of our student or not. Um, we can't ensure that. In fact, students can create fake accounts with real students names and come in and kind of create havoc and a little bit of mischief in your class or we simply don't want people signed in um, incorrectly. So we want students to go to student portal to ensure they're, they're, at, they're at OCSB student accounts and then everything works properly. When you go to share a Jamboard, where you go to share a document, all those things you need to be signed in properly to do so. So no, we don't want the links shared to parents. Now, if you want to send an email saying, please go to student portal and click on the icon, um that would be a great thing to do uh, but we don't want the actual link sent to parents okay and i have another quick question sure so 
for a teacher, if I'm thinking the seven, eight teachers, especially, or maybe an elementary French teacher, do you recommend that they make their own link? Yes, everyone. So those cool host controls that I was showing you before, these do not show up if you are just a participant in a meet. So the ability to toggle on and off quick access, share screen and chat messages um, is only available to the host. And there are a few other things also. So right now, uh, student 17 is muted, but I can mute that student if I wanted to. And I could also remove uh, a student from a meeting. So if there was an emergency and let's say someone had breached the password and the student is, you know, behaving erratically or their, you know, an inappropriate image or chat message was shared, you can remove the student from the meeting. This ability is not available if you are simply a participant. So every teacher, French teachers, seven, eight teachers, all must make their own links. And we recommend only sharing it with your class that you have for that particular period. So for seven, eight teachers, this means creating five calendar events per day. Um, and don't worry, trust me, once you get used to it, it will just take you a, a couple of minutes to do. And the big thing here, if you forget everything else, please turn off quick access because this uh, means that your students cannot use the link when you're not there and you can reuse the link. So if you're a primary teacher and you're using this link all day, it's really great because what you're going to want to do is the students will hang up their um, their call. So it's really important that they actually use the hang up button. And then once you are by yourself alone, the last person, kind of like a fire drill, you want to be the last person out. And that means that you are locking the door on this meet. So you would double check that quick access was off. And then, then you would leave the meeting. I would not leave the meeting now if student 17 was hanging out. So in this particular case, if this student has left and you can't get their attention and it's been you know five minutes and they're not coming back you actually would want to remove the student from the meeting and then add them back into the calendar event this is tedious and you don't want to do this so i, I would almost if the, you're new to google meet and um or if your students are new to google meet this would be almost the first thing that i would train them to do is to leave the call go back to student portal and sign back in. All of these things, you're in a brand new environment. You're probably gonna wanna train your students mic on and off, camera on and off, if they choose to have their camera on, um, and then working out the, the different kinds of features to, tr to train your students. And you can use my handy dandy um, Google Meet basics for students, you could play that right in your Google Meet and you could pause it and talk about different features. And that, that could be uh, your first introduction to Google Meet. You could do that today. Um, so yes, I think I, I went over most of the safety features. So um, I'm just gonna be student 17 right now and make sure I uh, properly hang up my call. So I'm student 17 here, I'm gonna leave this call. I'm going to go back to me into my Google Meet there. So now I'm alone. Now it's OK to leave the call. And then you can reuse this Meet since you have turned off quick access. Or if you're ready to start your math class, you would click into that uh, second calendar event. And what's great about going to the Google Meet icon is that your students will see a list of all their meetings. Now, these are my meetings right here, but they will see. So if you're a seven, eight teacher, I know I keep saying seven, eight, but they're my peeps, come on. Um, they will see period one, two, three, four, all the way up to six in a neat little row. No trying to remember, what do I have first period? What do I have third period? Trust me, I know even in January, actually, especially after the Christmas break, they will forget what their schedule is. Um, and then that prevents them from needing to know those things and they can just get joined in. So thanks so much for listening. Awesome. Thank you, Tara. Uh, and again, thank you so much for all your hard work going into that because um, it really is based off of feedback of four months, right? It's not us just telling, 
figuring out the process out of nowhere. It is four months of teachers doing this every single day, why we've come to the process that we've had. And again, like we come at it from the system perspective. So we had a lot of issues with occasional teachers, right? So that's another reason why we don't want parents getting accustomed to receiving a link through their email, because if there's a supply teacher, those supply teachers are not communicating with parents. So this process works for all roles at the OCSB. So that's why we want everybody following this consistent process. So thank you, Tara, you're the best. Um, so I thought I'd take this last little bit of time to go over some best practices with Google Meet. So again, this is not coming from me. It's not coming from our department. This is coming from working with the virtual teachers who are doing this all day, every day since September. So these tips and tricks are coming from them. Um, and they've often encouraged us to pass these on um, to uh, teachers working remotely. So the first point that I wanna talk about is uh, taking the time to set up properly before your class. So today you're gonna get some time to explore um, in the first part of your day, which is wonderful. So when I say take time to prepare, what I mean is, is your computer updated? So have you actually gone in and updated your computer? Have you gone in and updated your Chrome? So I'm gonna present my screen so I can show you what I mean when an updated Chrome. If you have a Chromebook, this isn't going um, to matter to you, but for um, everyone who has a laptop, in the top right-hand corner, you should see your picture or a circle with a letter. So you wanna make sure that that's what you see and that you don't see a red or an orange or an exclamation mark. So this is what we mean when we say, is your Chrome up to date? The other thing we want you to take a look at as well is your extensions. So a lot of us may on maybe on Twitter or you know from a colleague have an extension that's been recommended to us uh, from a friend or from Twitter. But if it's not board supported, we can't guarantee that it's not going to be causing glitches with your uh, with your Chrome. So if you are experiencing any glitches within your Google Meet, the first thing we want you to check are all of your extensions delete any extensions that you don't need. If you have any grid view extensions that are still hanging up there, delete them right away. We don't need those anymore. And I'll show you in a little bit why we don't need those extensions. So again, go through your extensions, clean up your computer um, so that you're giving it the best shot to do well in a Google Meet. The second thing, or the third thing rather, that we want you to take a look at before you get started is your microphone and your camera. So before you go live with your students, please test out those things. So I'm gonna go back to our meet. I'm gonna go in the bottom right-hand corner and I'm gonna click those three dots and I'm going to go to settings. And here on this screen, you can test out your microphone and you can test out your speakers. Then you can go to your video and test out those things. So this should just become your routine, right? Like when you walk into a classroom, you get your classroom set up same sort of deal. You want to go into your Google Meet, you want to go into your settings and make sure all of those things are working. The next point is to, I know Tara also said it on Twitter, that, to talk through your transitions. So one of the tips that came from virtual teachers, especially the teachers that are really nervous going live with their students on Google Meet and who aren't that comfortable yet with the technology and switching screens, a really important tip is to talk through your transitions. So it's not that dead air, because if you're clicking around your screen, but you haven't yet presented your screen, you wanna let the students know what you're doing, right? Because it keeps them engaged. So walk them through the process. I'm gonna go share my screen right now. And then it's just less awkward time, you're walking them through and you're also saying it out loud. So it kind of reduces that stress a little bit as you're telling the students what you're doing, right? Because they can't see it, so when they can't see something and you're just kind of clicking around, it can be awkward in that moment. So talk through your transitions. Um, the next big point that we have to say is to check in with your students that they can see and that they can hear what you're, they're supposed to be. Now, this doesn't mean that you just generally be like, hey class, can everybody see me? Because especially with our little kindergarten friends, you're gonna get 30 adorable voices saying, I can see you, I can see you. So what you wanna do is you wanna check in with one student in particular. So say little Jimmy is in your class. Jimmy, can you turn on your microphone and let me know if you can see my screen, right? So you wanna check in that they can see what they're supposed to see or that they can hear what they're supposed to hear. But again, a little trick is to just call on one student to confirm 
um, so that you don't have all the voices jumping in at one time. When you're in your meet for the first time, and perhaps you're holding up um, a document. So here's an example, this is just my board. But say you hold up a document like this, just know that in the camera on me, to you, it's going to look like it's flipped or reverse or backwards. But you need to know that it actually um, is not to the participant. So just like you were able to see the text on my board just now, so just know that you might see that it's backwards, but they do not see that it is reversed. Set yourself up for successful audio sharing. So when you go to share audio, a couple of tips and tricks that are coming from our virtual teachers. Please reduce any unnecessary tabs that you have open at the top of your screen. You don't wanna have a lot of tabs open. Step two, turn off your camera and invite your students to do the same. Not every student is gonna turn off their camera and that's okay, but you just wanna encourage them to try and turn it off before you play a video. Because if you're streaming 30 videos all at one time, that's a lot uh, of bandwidth that's sort of being taken up. So what you wanna do is reduce the number of tabs. So don't have any tab open that isn't necessary. Turn off your camera and ask the participants to turn off theirs. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to the bottom right-hand corner. And when you go to present, I'm presenting right now, so it's not gonna work, but you're gonna choose the third option to present audio. So every time you wanna present sound, you want to make sure that you're choosing option number three. And our remote learning playlist, um, what you're gonna do as well, <laughs> um, in your remote learning playlist, there is a video that shows you exactly what to click. So I would recommend you watch that today um, to learn how specifically to share sound um, or audio in a Google Meet. But those are just some tips in terms of your audio. Another thing, we have two more points. Don't stress about the things that you can't control. There's gonna be a lot happening in the background of your students. And we always wanna lead with that empathetic and that compassionate view, right? So. You know, there's lots of variables that are outside the student's ability to control in the home. We also have lots of students in virtual who are not comfortable turning their camera on for whatever reason, and we respect that. So if you think about some of the online courses that maybe we've taken as AQs, we are not required to be on camera, yet we are still academically successful and receive our certification. So it's not mandatory that students turn on their camera, but they do have to participate in some way. So that's when you're exploring with either they can participate in the chat box. Maybe you are playing with the new polls feature. Um, maybe you have a pair deck where the student can engage. Being on camera does not equal academic success. So just make sure that you uh, sort of have that level of comfort and figure out different ways to get your students participating that don't require that. And the last one is be firm with expectations with your parents. So this is perhaps maybe more of the elementary side of things, but you are gonna have parents that are involved because especially of the nature of maybe the student's ability with technology, they may be sitting there, they may be listening um, in case their child needs support. Have your expectations ready to go and let your parents know that. And again, if you experience anything um, that needs attention, your principal is there to support you. So shooting them an email is good. But again, be firm with parents and the expectations. Um, and just know that it is a reality. Um, so just have those expectations ready and have those talking points ready if need be during the meet. And the last point that I just thought about is that if you are teaching littles, and again, it's one of those things that necessary for some good for all, but we have seen on Twitter, a lot of teachers printing the icons for the three icons at the bottom. So the microphone, the hang up and the camera, if you print those and you hold those up, those are really helpful to prompt students to either turn on or off their microphone. I think that's it for me right now. Um, Any I, other points? I'm wondering, I'm wondering what happens if I have a student doing this. Oh, yeah. So I don't think you, I'm going to have to present my screen. Oh, no, but you're talking. So maybe not. Okay. Well, <laughs> what you're seeing is you're seeing Steph change her background a million times. It's going to happen. Your students are going to have fun today especially if this is their first time, right? Just like when you hand out manipulatives to students, you always let them play with the manipulatives before you get into the, the heavy learning. So Tara is swimming, 
Steph is uh, in some, re- oh, she's in a very chic office. So uh, yes. Yeah. So and, the and- backgrounds are going to be changed for sure. Let your kids have fun. Get out their sillies. Tara did it last night with her boys. You know, it will happen. And, and the other thing is you can lead into it, right? So tell me a story about where you are. And here, bonus, bonus, especially for our high school panel who won't see a lot of their students. Because although sometimes it's really interesting because your students already know each other. They've been face to face with each other for an extended period of time already. Um, but if they're playing with their backgrounds, they have to have their micro or their um, their cameras on. So it is a unique way to maybe engage students differently. So uh, maybe... Like, so Tara was going for a swim in her, in her uh, under, under sea. So again, it gives a finite amount of options, but then they can tell a story about what they're doing. And I'm thinking that might be a cool thing, maybe to try an FSL or something like that. So um, those are definitely op- options. And then Tara was also demonstrating the raised hand feature, um, which again is in that bottom corner. And you do get a little bloom, 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 bloom. Um, so I'm getting a little bloom, bloom sound. Um, it's almost a perfect uh, imitation of my opinion. Bloom, bloom. Um, which, which again tells you the student. So, and then why did that matter? So I'm just going to share my screen again, just so that you can see what that looks like. Um, this is going to be a lot of us on the screen. Um, so on, so I can see here all the participants that are in this presentation. Um, I can use these icons at the top to tell me more information. So um, I can click here, and then I can see all the people in the call. And then if, if Tara and Catherine raise their hands, I can see that uh, that I can raise their hands and I also have the ability to put their hand down, which I don't think I could do last week. <laughs> I don't know, ladies, if you can confirm. Um, can you put your hand up again, ladies? So again, um, so there, so there's, I can see that Catherine has her raised hand, but I can lower. And then if I have her up here, I can lower all the hands. So again, that might be another way to cue, hey, can you guys hear me? Have her raise your hand. So again, she doesn't have to come on screen, but she can raise her hand. And again, you have all the features there. Uh, later on this week, we will talk more about the, the new features of Enterprise, but we don't expect anybody to use any more than these basic tools uh, today because, or this week, because really this is about you getting comfortable with this situation and it can be really really fun excuse me and your virtual um colleagues will say like once you get used to it it is it can be really transformative so we're excited that you are here and i think that's the um i think that's the end and right? i just wanted to say one quick thing before everybody logs off is that like we said virtual has been in existence since september and there are students that are and teachers that are really thriving right i've seen kindergartens up to grade 12 so there is the possibility that this is this is a wonderful opportunity, and it you know there are students that are really thriving in this environment, um, and you can do so many creative, wonderful things. And like Steph said, lean into it, right? Like it's not easy for anybody; it's all new. Um, and just tell your students that. Be vulnerable. If you're not comfortable with technology, tell them that. Model that, right? We tell our students to make mistakes and model mistakes, and so we need to do the same. So just talk your way through it today. So just to, to, to finish up today, we do have um, some time at 10 o'clock after your uh, most of your staff meetings will be over. Um, we will have some live streams going over HAPRA basics again, um, just because we know some people still may not have put their toe into that. So uh, Catherine's going to be leading some live streams about that at 10, at 1030. And then at 11 o'clock for an hour, there's a drop-in session. So if you want to jump, drop in. Um, and your principal has all this information. There's a drop-in session so you can ask questions and answers. And then Tara's going to be available from 10 to uh, 12, also available talking about any questions that you have about Google Meet. Um, if you want some extra help setting that up or, or any of these questions, um, we do, again, um, check out the OCSB how-to channel. We, we, have, we, we hope we have most of the questions covered there. If not, let us know, and we can certainly... Um, assist you but um, we want this to go as smoothly as possible for you so we are here to support you we are here to help Um, so again if you haven't seen the the teacher checklist you want to go and check that out because it's got lots of details in it and uh, again we 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 are excited for you this is a really cool opportunity to just change something it's it's like going back to our very first day teaching again in some ways because we don't know what to expect but that's okay because we made it through our first day of teaching we made it through our second day of teaching we made it through our fifth or eighth or maybe our 30th year of teaching and it's always an opportunity to learn so um, to model 
it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay. Just, you know, I've asked myself out of live streams all the time and it turned out okay. So um, we, we love you, we appreciate you and we're here to help. So reach out if we can be of service to you and we wish you all an amazing year and an even better 2021. Bye right, everybody. Bye.